Hey guys, Darren back again. Uh, a little bit of a different video today. I'm just gonna run you through my 3D printer that I picked up recently. I've already started to modify it, yes. Uh, but those that recognize it, this is the Monoprice Select Mini printer. Uh, it's only about $200 off Amazon and you really can't beat it. So let's go through it. Right, so look, I'm holding the camera, so it's gonna be a little bit wobbly, so just bear with me. But basically, this little printer, um, prints come out looking like this. So this is a, a satin rear battery door. I printed vertically like that. And uh, you know, this at the bottom, that's like, it's called a brim. It just uh, helps to stick to the build plate when it's coming out, and then you just snap it off. It's very easy to snap off. And the end result looks something like that. So, oops, almost dropped it. So it comes out really nice. You know, you do get the lines on it, of course, the layer height, but it's not too bad at all. The detail comes out quite nicely. So I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, this is one of my custom design parts for my satin replacement power supply. I've also got one for the Dreamcast. So I'll talk about that on an upcoming video. So let's warm it up and do a print. Come down here to the control panel. Go to temperature, extruder temperature. Let's turn it up to 205 and we'll warm the bed up to 50. So this is the, this is a cooling fan here. There's a cooling fan and that's, that's the hot end. That's where the actual filament comes out. Uh, that's a fan to keep the actual uh, cooling element itself cool. And this is called a Bowden tube and this is where the filament comes in. So the filament's reeled up comes in, there's a motor up here on the extruder motor. That feeds it through down the tube and into the hot end and, and it prints it. And then this whole assembly slides, uh, X, this is the X direction, so it slides left and right. And the tray moves forward in the Y direction. And this whole arm assembly goes up in the Z direction. So that's how you get your three dimensions. It's pretty simple. Uh, and that's it, I've just got blue painters tape to help with the bed adhesion um, but normally that works quite well but what i've just done yesterday is i put this layer of plastic over the top of that which is actually stuck down um, it's called pei it's a type of plastic that is designed for this and it helps uh, the models stick to the build surface um, and you don't have to replace the tape all the time so that's kind of cool so all we need to do is just give that a quick spray with uh isopropyl alcohol, our best friend, uh, because if there's fingerprints and things on this, we don't want that to affect our prints. So you just wipe that clean, move that aside. <clears throat> our temperatures now, we've come up. So we're, we're hot enough. Our, our bed temperature is just coming up as well. So as soon as that's ready, I'll print one out. So to design your files, I use a piece of software called Design Spark Mechanical. Um, I'll give you a really quick demo of how this works. So basically we um, start off in a two dimensional drawing. We might draw a basic rectangle or something. Uh, we, you know, we can just type in and adjust those numbers on the fly. You can always come back and adjust things. Then, um, you know, then you turn it into a 3D object by giving it the third dimension. And you can do really cool things like, um, adding say, you know, a recessed uh, socket position or something. So just say you wanted to put like a, a DC jack on the back of the back plane or something. Um, you know, let's create like an eight millimeter hole. Let's, uh, let's pull that piece of plastic um, completely out of the way. If I can just adjust this for you so you can see. So minus to remove it, pull it out, it's gone. So now we've got a back plate with a, a socket hole. Um, let's just round off these edges because they're a bit bit sharp. Um, put a bit of a, a roundness on them. Same with our four surrounding top edges. Let's also round them off. Um, I will do that that way. There you go. 
And that's it. So within about, you know, one minute, we've just created a, a nice little 3D model that's ready for printing. So uh, it's that easy. And you can do some really powerful things with, uh, with this software in not much time at all and a very low learning curve. Then you save it as, uh, you know, the mechanical file itself. Uh, save as, um, save it as, you know, the raw software file, just so you can come back and edit it. Uh, yeah, you know, I'm working on some other little projects which aren't ready yet, but they're getting there. Uh, and then the next stage of the process is called slicing. So we save it in a format called STL, which is, um, let's just call this thing. Uh, yes, I've already done one. Save it in STL, open it up in Cura, and we go like this. Open our thing file. There's our um, there's our model ready for printing. We can we can zoom and rotate it. We can do all sorts of stuff. We can scale it. But in a nutshell, you basically just click uh, save to removable drive, and it'll do all the slicing and layer by layer calculations all fully automatically, and it'll just print. This outputs the G code file onto the SD card, and that's what the printer reads. It reads G code. So you can obviously go into a lot more custom settings, and I customize my prints to do all sorts of different things, but you don't need to get into that right now. All you need to know is the software to use. Uh, that's it. Put in your printer and click print. Okay, so that's all preheated. Let's now X out of this screen. Let's go back to the print. Now I've got an SD card here, to, here in the side, down in that little slot down there. It's also USB. <clears throat> There's also Wi-Fi, so this is a really great printer. So it comes up with a, a little simple menu and these are all my files that I've been playing around with. Yeah, look, I'm trying to work out a, a Sega Master System replacement D-pad. I've almost got that worked out. There's actually two versions of that. So that's coming along nicely. Uh, my Dreamcast PSU replacement back thing. Um, yeah, some brackets for some mods I was doing on this printer. Um, some more mods, some leveling tools. All sorts of stuff. I actually printed this, uh, these holders for the spool. Um, all this is printed. This is in blue. That's all modified and printed. This is printed. That little key is printed that just shows that it's spinning and extruding. So it's quite versatile what you can do with this. Um, so let's find the file. Satin. There we go. Satin uh, battery door. Well, no, let's do a, <clears throat> actually let's not do, let's do the uh, Dreamcast uh, GD EMU holder. That's a nice print, that one. I actually need to do another one of those in white. So we've got the white filament loaded. Let's take that one. And the printer kicks off. Uh, it's up to temperature, so it starts. It's just gonna prepare itself now. Just clean off the nozzle. Now I'm gonna have to flick a switch here and turn on this cooling fan and some LEDs. So that might make a bit of a noise, a bit of a racket, but uh, it's not too bad. Okay, so I've just kicked off the print and what it does initially is it lays down, uh, it's called a brim layer, and this is configurable in the software, but I like to leave it on. And what it does is it lays down this sort of outer skirt layer and it helps the model stick to the build surface. So this plastic that it's actually putting down now gets snapped away, it's completely removed. But um, it does a couple of things, you know, it helps set up the extruder and the hot end and gets the flow just nice and it starts to uh, settle all the temperatures down and get everything really honed in before it starts on the model. So I like to do that. Um, now I've got the fan running on the front, which is a cooling fan, and I've got the LEDs shining down on the surface. So it is pretty bright. You can't really see it too well. Let me just flick that off for a second. Right, so now you can probably see the hot end a bit easier. And as it creeps along and prints the layers, which is it's pretty mesmerizing actually. You can watch this all day. I kind of do. 
Um, so I'll let this print a little bit more and then I'll do a bit of a time lapse and I'll film the actual complete build of, this, of the whole model. So I'll put you up in a stand around about here and I'll, I'll set the time lapse and we'll just check in on it every five minutes or so. And there you have it. There's the finished product. Um, it's a little bit bit daggy in some spots, but it's come out really well. Um, a really nice finish actually on that one. So that's as simple as it is. Then all we do now is we just uh, you know peel off this uh, adhesion sort of layer that we don't need, the brim. Just literally peel it off with your fingers uh, and we tidy it up. So we go around. Um, and then these little stringy parts, they're just uh, settings I need to further fine tune. It's called retraction settings, but basically I just cut them out and I'll give that a, a light sand in those areas just to trim it out, but it's pretty quick to fix. Um, so I'll sand or file those a bit clean and then we're done. And there we have it, that one's all cleaned up. Um, it's all done. It just took about a minute to clean that up and that's the finished result. So the quality is pretty amazing for a cheap $200 printer. Uh, the quality is amazing. You can see the, the nice curves there and the underneath layer is really quite smooth. It's good, good bed adhesion. Um, and it's really strong. These things are actually quite strong. So that's it guys, a little quick uh, behind the scenes look at how I do 3D printing. Um, recommend you get into it if you've got an interest in design and creativity sort of things, it's quite fun. All right guys, until next time, catch you later.